this is uh, Gabby with Ender's Analytics again, and this week's tutorial I'm going to show you how to customize your menu uh, within Site Catalyst. Uh, so uh, if you didn't know, there is a, a way of customizing these menus, and I'm going to go ahead and just get started here uh, by clicking on the star, going into Admin Tools and Report Suites. Um, the customizations are all related to, uh, they're, they're all per report suite, so any changes to the menu structure that you do to one report suite will not affect any other report suite. Um, so just keep that in mind in case you have certain things you want to do, um, but you don't want that to be across all of the report suites. Alright, so I have the report suite here that I want to uh, go ahead and customize. And then you go under Edit Settings, General, and uh, Customize Menus. I'll let that load for a second here. Okay, so here is the way to do it. So you have a number of different little tools up here that you can use. Uh, you can create a new folder if you want to do any kind of custom reporting um, and kind of put them in together into a new folder. And so you can create a new folder. You can rename existing ones. Uh, you can uh, restore the default name of something. Um, you can toggle visibility, so you can just hide pieces, uh, hide things in the, uh, in the navigation, or you can delete them outright. Um, and even if you delete them outright, you do have Restore Defaults. And I believe Restore Defaults and Restore Simplified will restore things um, back to uh, where they were, even if they were deleted. I'm not entirely sure about that, but definitely um, it will restore things even if you toggle visibility. And uh, generally, I don't recommend deleting anything. Um, you know, why completely delete something when you can just hide it? Because um, you may or may not want to come back and, and uh, use it again. Because the, the downside is if you did delete something and you want to restore it, you, to restore defaults, it's going to restore everything. And um, that way, you're going to have to rename and redo everything that way. So um, in general, I just generally don't recommend deleting unless it's like a new folder or something that you created and and you decide you're not going to use it and you want to get rid of it so in that case you can you know I wouldn't have um, I wouldn't recommend against deleting it but um, for any of the ones that kind of come out of the box uh, from Psycatalyst you do not um, yeah I really wouldn't say you don't want to delete them you want to maybe hide them uh, and I think hiding is is more than adequate because it just takes it off the menu you can't see it except for when you're within um, the uh, editor here itself so how do you do this so for example if you're a lead generation site and you don't have any e-commerce you want to get rid of anything that's e-commerce related from your reports um, just so it doesn't confuse any of your users. So go ahead and you can see here we have products and we have all this kind of e-commerce type uh, menu structure and we can just toggle visibility. And when you toggle visibility it just has cross hatches. So if anyone's done any customization to your menus and you don't know what, where something happened, what happened to it, you can also kind of come into this report. Just look for anything that's cross hatched and uh, you'll know that was um, hidden at some point. Uh, there's a couple of other e-commerce reports um, we can hide. So we've got purchases and, and this whole submenu here that we can hide, shopping cart that we can hide, um, etc. I think, I think that's the main um, stuff when it comes to... Let's just see. Oh yeah, sales cycle. We can also hide that. I mean, if, you're not, if you're not doing... Um, e-commerce you really don't need those kinds of things so you can kind of just kind of come through here and just kind of clean things up um, as as you like now for example uh, with the custom conversions and custom traffic reports um, you kind of get them uh, organized you know custom conversion 1 through 10 and then if you have you know 20 um, through or 20 11 through 20 etc and um, those are not always the most intuitive naming conventions. And so if you are doing a brand new implementation and haven't started yet, one of the things I always recommend doing is trying to make logical groupings of your um, custom variables because that way you can then rename this folder and make it a little bit more intuitive. So you want to put um, everything into like this is the blog tracking versus the website tracking and you know it whatever logical groupings kind of make sense to you in terms of how you're going to tag everything um, so for example here we're going to go ahead and rename this and I'm going to name this oops for some reason double clicking always makes it move I just want to go and get rid of that and do blog tracking Okay, so the categories, they're, they're blog categories, so um, that's why it's named that. 
And then I can do the same thing here and rename and blog tracking. So any tracking for the blog piece of my website would go into this category in terms of the uh, the variables that I'm choosing. And then um, if I do anything else um, tracking wise, I can always add, create a new category and start tracking it that way. Um, and I just think it's a little bit more intuitive that way. Now one of the other things you can do is you can also rearrange these reports. You can rearrange them in whatever logical um, hierarchy makes sense to you. So for example, I might want to move video up um, and let's say I really don't care about mobile that much, I'll move it down here. Um, and you see how I'm kind of just dragging and dropping, and, and you can kind of see exactly where it kind of goes. And let's say I say that traffic sources is more important than paths, and I'm really much more interested in custom conversions and custom traffic. And if for some reason custom conversion and custom traffic don't make sense to you, so for example, I'm the only one who uses these reports, so I can rename this and just say evars and sprops. So for me that might be more intuitive and so I can rename them. So once you're done kind of arranging everything, naming things that makes the way that makes sense to you, um, hiding any kind of reports that you really don't want to see, uh, you can go ahead and click save uh, over here on the right. It will give you a warning. So any user who logs into this particular report suite and has access to it will see the new menu structure. Um, so it's not a per user change, it's a per report suite change as I mentioned earlier. And we'll click OK. Um, and then we can go back and look at our reports and analytics. And you can now see uh, my changes. So here is uh, the moved up video reports. Um, I now have the evars and sprops instead of custom conversion, custom tracking, um, etc. So, as you can see, this is now how it looks. And again, you know, if you don't ever do campaigns, you can hide those, that kind of thing. So you can actually tidy up the um, the menu navigation and just um, help make it more intuitive to your team in um, as a whole. Um, all right, so that is uh, everything I have on uh, on organizing your menu structure and, re and, and editing it and changing it. Uh, if you uh, found this video useful, um, I would appreciate it if you would give a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, and, and uh, I would really appreciate a subscription um, if you want to see more of my videos. And until next week, thank you very much. Take care.